what if we can influence behavior in the real world based on experiences in the virtual world? This is a question we were asking in 1993 when we conducted a study using virtual reality to treat people with a fear of heights. I'm a clinical psychologist and a professor in psychiatry. I specialize in treating people with anxiety. I've devoted 30 years, my entire career, to developing new treatments for people with anxiety and post-traumatic stress disorder, or PTSD. A lot of what I do for anxiety is exposure therapy, which is a type of therapy that's been around since the 1950s and involves helping people confront what they're scared of, but in a therapeutic manner so that their fear decreases. For example, if someone were scared of heights, we might take them in an elevator, ride up a few floors at a time, stay there until their anxiety decreases, then ride up a few more floors, stay there until their anxiety goes down, and so on until we can ride to the top and down again without excessive anxiety. It's very effective. In general, about 90% of people with the fear of heights respond in just a few sessions. Yet many therapists don't like exposure therapy. Why? Because it usually involves leaving the office to help their patients confront what they're scared of. It's inconvenient and expensive. For example, if a therapist was gonna help someone overcome the fear of flying, they would have to arrange a stationary airplane, drive to the airport, and if they had to fly with the patient, it would be both expensive and time-consuming since insurance wouldn't cover it. So we decided to bring the outside world into the therapist's office. What if we recreated the plane in virtual reality? Would it work? With a team of brilliant computer science graduate students, we designed a study to find out, starting with the fear of heights. We designed in virtual reality places I would take a patient in reality that they might want to avoid, including a glass hotel elevator and a series of footbridges over a river in a canyon. The highest bridge was a rope bridge with a few slats missing that one of our patients dubbed the Indiana Jones Bridge. People who participated in our study avoided heights at all cost. That's the definition of a phobia. One guy who was in the study was so fearful that in order to meet his friends for drinks at their favorite spot, he walked up all 73 floors to the top of the hotel restaurant. Instead of taking people on a real elevator, we took them on a virtual glass elevator, and we monitored their anxiety, and we watched it go up and come back down. People who received the virtual reality exposure therapy improved on every measure and in a meaningful way, including putting themselves in real life height situations. That means they no longer had a phobia. And the guy who walked up 73 floors, after treatment, he invited his buddies for a drink at the top, and he rode the elevator up and down with them. We published the study in 1995, and it was the first published study using virtual reality to treat a psychiatric or psychological condition. The response was amazing. My phone was ringing off the hook from colleagues and potential patients in the media. We used this proof of the concept of using virtual reality for exposure therapy as inspiration for our next phase. We wanted to try something bigger, travel by plane in virtual reality. There are over 25 million adults in the United States with a fear of flying. Another 20% of those who do fly have to get sloshed to do it. <laughs> so our team created a virtual airplane, and we conducted a number of studies comparing virtual reality exposure therapy to using a real airplane. Here is an old clip. We will begin takeoff momentarily.
then asked people to fly on a real airplane. 93% flew on a real airplane after only eight sessions. They no longer had a fear of flying. The virtual airplane worked. And it had real advantages. We could take off and land as many times as we wanted, all within our 45-minute therapy session without leaving the office. <laughs> as a therapist, I had ultimate control. If my patient wasn't ready for turbulence, I could guarantee there wouldn't be turbulence. When my patient was ready for turbulence, I could guarantee there would be turbulence. But could virtual reality treat PTSD? Nightmares, flashbacks, feeling physical reminders in your body day and night are some of the common symptoms of PTSD, where a person feels haunted by something that happened to them in their past. The haunting nature of PTSD comes out in these re-experiencing symptoms. You might have heard of a Vietnam veteran who hears a car backfire and hits the ground, or a child who's been repeatedly beaten flinch when an adult raises his hand just to brush his hair back. One Vietnam veteran had a flashback while driving down the highway when instead of seeing the road ahead through his windshield, he saw a scene from his time in Vietnam play out before his eyes. And you can imagine how disorienting that was. Even though veterans with PTSD experience nightmares and flashbacks, they tend to be very avoidant. They don't want to talk about it. They don't want to think about it. They don't want to confront anything that reminds them of it. Veterans might be even more emotionally avoidant than other PTSD sufferers. They're trained to disengage from their emotions. And that's a good thing if you're in a war zone. You don't want to have a big emotional response in a combat zone. So they put their emotions in a box and they try to keep it locked. But exposure therapy isn't as effective if we can't access the emotions associated with the event. That's part of what we need people to learn, is that if you stick with the memories and stick with the reminders in real life, the distress will go down. There are different theories about how PTSD develops, but we're certain that avoidance is what keeps someone from recovering. Experiencing a traumatic event is similar to the grief process. I have felt at times like I was holding someone's broken heart in my hands. The pain in the room was so palpable. But we need to emotionally process these painful emotions. There's no way to the other side of the pain except through it. But many with PTSD don't process it. They avoid it. It festers, and this is how it haunts them. In particular, Vietnam veterans were still suffering decades later. So we created two virtual Vietnam environments, a virtual Huey helicopter and a virtual clearing surrounded by jungle that most of our guys referred to as a landing zone. At the time, we didn't know how the veterans would respond to the intensity of the virtual reality. The head mount display that we were using cost $14,000. And when the virtual Huey helicopter landed, there were male voices yelling, move out, move out. We were worried that they would rip off the head mount display and jump out of the seat to get out of the helicopter. So we tethered this $14,000 head mount display to the ceiling. So just in case they did, it wouldn't hit the floor. <laughs> Even though we were treating outpatients, we set up our treatment room on the inpatient unit and had doctors and nurses on call right there just in case someone decompensated and thought they were actually back there during the virtual reality exposure therapy. As it turns out, none of this was necessary. It was amazing watching these avoidant Vietnam veterans engage in the virtual reality. Our very first patient had been a helicopter pilot in Vietnam. And as he approached the virtual Huey helicopter with the blades rotating, he crouched down as he would have approaching a real helicopter. One of our veterans had dug mass graves in Vietnam. And watching him relive it using the joystick, almost like it was the lever of his bulldozer, moving it forward and backward, turning a little bit and moving it forward 
and backward, was eerily reminiscent, and we could picture him digging those mass graves. It was fascinating hearing these guys describe elements from their memories that they were seeing in the virtual environment that we had not included. Somebody saw water buffaloes. We didn't have water buffaloes in the virtual environment. Someone saw the enemy in the jungle, yet we hadn't included any humans in the virtual Vietnam. By his last session, the helicopter pilot told his therapist, I don't know, I guess it just isn't bothering me anymore. And that's the best that we can hope for with PTSD. This group of Vietnam veterans were all on medications, they had all had problems with alcohol and drugs in the past. They had all been in the system over 20 years at the time. And the virtual reality exposure therapy helped them decrease their PTSD. But could it also help the younger veterans returning from Iraq and Afghanistan? We created a virtual Iraq to see. Here are a few clips from that. <laughs> We can put them in a virtual Humvee or an MRAP. We can have them driving down the desert highway, walking in a marketplace, at a checkpoint, in a village, on a forward operating base. We can match almost whatever they're describing in the virtual reality. We can put them in the driver's seat or the passenger seat, back seat or the turret if they were the gunner. We can change the time of day and the direction of the explosion. They describe in the present tense in minute detail the traumatic event and their therapist matches what they're describing in the virtual reality. We have them go over it and over it and over it. We usually go through it several times within one session, and usually it takes anywhere from six to 12 sessions. A common problem with untreated PTSD is that people believe our stories rather than the facts, and we all tend to do this. One veteran from Iraq's story was that while he was driving back to base, they hid an IED that blew up his Humvee and his buddy next to him died. And he carried around the story that it was his fault since he was driving. If you can't even go there, if you can't even think about it, then you can't possibly think about it differently. We were able to recreate what he described in the virtual reality. I'm driving back to base, Smith is next to me, Jones in the back seat. All of a sudden we hid an IED on the right front, everything fills with smoke. After going through his memory repeatedly in exposure therapy, he came to the realization that although it was awful that his friend died, he had done everything he could, and it was the insurgent's fault, not his. He discovered that the story he had been telling himself wasn't true. We recently completed a study using the virtual reality exposure therapy for Iraq and Afghanistan veterans with PTSD, and it worked. Not only did their PTSD symptoms decrease with treatment, but their psychophysiological startle and cortisol that some call the stress hormone decreased after treatment and stayed less reactive even a year after treatment ended. I think this exaggerated startle response is something that makes PTSD sufferers feel crazy. They know they're not in a war zone, yet their bodies are responding as if there's the same level of stress. So when their bodies are learning that they don't need to be so on guard, that's great news for me. I have become a real believer in the resiliency of the human spirit. As we said about testing, we're changing actions and reactions in the real world based on experiences in a virtual world. Conventional wisdom is it takes about 20 years from the time the first research is published to become common use. We published that first study using virtual reality exposure therapy to treat a psychological disorder in 1995, 
and here we are 20 years later. Virtual reality is not just for business and entertainment. The time for VR to treat debilitating conditions like PTSD is now, and that's just the beginning. We've come a long way from the $14,000 head mount display we use for Vietnam veterans. Terrific headsets are available for a few hundred dollars. Some that run using smartphones are available for as little as $99. With the price of head mount displays becoming more affordable, doctors can assess patients using virtual reality. A suite of self-help VRs right around the corner. Want to quit smoking? Lose weight? Overcome your fears without leaving your home? Virtual reality is coming soon to help you.